so driving out here on the eastern plains i don't know part of the reason i wanted to get out here was to look at pikes peak from the east to see how tall it looks because i got my binoculars with me i mean you can clearly see it still you can probably see it's gotta be like 10,000 feet you can still see as i'm driving east probably five miles ten miles outside of lyman and i can still see the peak pretty clearly so i'm gonna keep going I think the cutoff for the theoretical limit accounting for elevation drop is, you know, at 5,000, you should see it 115 miles away. I probably have 30 more miles to go. So, this is what I do on Sundays. I test the shape of the earth. Looking at it, I can still see it in the rear view mirror, the real view mirror. But it's a nice clear day, so today's the day to test it. I've got the time off. I mean, look at how blue that sky is. There's not a cloud out here. Okay, I just went through Ariba, Colorado. It was at 5230 elevation. Looking back to the east, I pulled over on the overpass. I could not see the peak. I'm gonna head up to the next overpass and take a look. Um, let's see what the sign says, but even scanning the horizon with the binoculars, I couldn't see anything at Ariba. Um, Flagler, I think that was the town. I'm gonna go up 10 miles and take a look, and I'll turn back. Just past Flagler. Um, so I'm trying to get to the top of this hill here. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try to get up on top of this hill here and look back with the binoculars. Alright, this is about as far out as I'm going to go. Let's see if we can see anything. So, so I'm out probably around mile 405 off Highway 70, Eastern Colorado. I'm trying to get to a good vantage point on a hill, like up here. This will be perfect. Um, where I can look back and see if the Pikes Peak is visible. So we'll get it in a minute. A little weird. I don't have any navigation because I turned off my data service. But I want to go to that hill up there. And then I'll turn around. And hopefully hopefully I can get back to I-70 over to Flagler. But without the maps, I don't know where these roads go. It would be so weird to live at one of these farms. I feel like I'm just searching. It's like I'm trying to make sense of this world so this is part of this process looking for the curve of the earth like to prove that things make sense to me um, not that I'm a flat earth believer but some of the arguments you see these videos out on the ocean I mean just looking through my binoculars though like out on the horizon I could see a bunch of the windmills kind of dip below the horizon like way out there on a flat plane so I think that could be the curve kind of see the curve in there so I couldn't see anything even with scanning the horizon again with binoculars going over the next hill so that was two series of horizons I crossed over on these back roads and I couldn't see the peak so that tells me there's a curve otherwise you'd see a 14,000 foot peak sitting somewhere in the distance even going over these ridges. I mean, because logically the peak would have to point over any of these horizons for there not to be a curve. So I spotted a truck going down this way to the next town. I'm gonna try to get back to the interstate over there, <laughs> uh, going with binoculars for my navigation. Are you heading west on I-70? I don't know if that's just like a hill, a giant hill that keeps reappearing in front of me, but I think that's the elevation change coming away from the mountains. But as I'm looking through the binoculars and thinking about life, like, life is short, it's precious. Thank God you have the sight to see things and even think about things and comprehend things. Um, it's a miracle, it's short. It's like, how much stuff are we not seeing? How much stuff? can't we see even despite how hard we focus on the things we just passed through Ariba, colorado which is 20 miles east of lyman and this is about as flat as you can get and i don't see anything the tip of a peak or anything out here we're at 5300 feet too so it's pretty high elevation I mean, we should be looking flat to colorado springs colorado springs is 6,000 feet so it goes up 700 feet over the next 100 miles where the fuck is Pikes Peak? You can't see anything. That uh, has to be a curve. Okay, there's the first sight of the peak. And you can only see the top of it. 
just the very top, top 1,000 feet. That's definitely a curve. And the pattern I'm seeing is like we're going over horizon to horizon. And you can't see beyond these horizons. But we're about, I don't know, 15 miles west, 15 miles east of um, Lyman. And that's where you first see the first 1,000 feet of the peak. Which is consistent with the, the curved earth model. You can see it way out there. And mile 379-ish, 378. Just past uh, exit 376 Bovina, Colorado. Um, where I first had a visual sight on the summit of Pikes Peak. Kind of see it over there. I gotta drive, but... Yeah, you can only see literally like the top 1,000 feet. The very top of it. It's like right near that radio tower. To the left of that radio tower, you can see little things sticking up. That's the summit of Pikes Peak. About 100 miles away. Freaking miles away. Okay, here's a good view of the peak. We're still not even to line it, but now you can see the whole length of the peak. But before you can only see the snow cap portion, which is the top 1,000 to 2,000 feet. So yeah, there it is. Lyman, 70 miles, or uh, Denver, 95 miles out. Being tested, you can see those um, windmill towers. Um, in line with Pikes Peak. If you know the height of those and the distance we're at, like that could triangulate the height and tell you what's going on too. Okay, so I'm back at the lab and what I did today, I was I wanted to test visually how far out on the eastern horizon I could see a 14,100 foot peak, Pikes Peak, um, going east on I-70. Now I've used the accepted model of the earth dimensions which basically breaks down to eight inches per mile squared and drop and i put together a spreadsheet and an accurate autocad scaled model of the earth where i've actually drawn picture or elevations of the peaks with the tangent of the curves at different elevations in order to determine the maximum theoretical distance you could see from on the horizon to the top of the peak. Now, now here's my spreadsheet I used. What this does, the y-axis here is the distance in miles from the image you're looking at. And this shows you the, the drop of the curve in Earth's radius due to its um, curve. This is inches. So basically, once you start getting up to, you know, 50 miles, 80 miles, you're, you're, okay, at 90 miles, you've dropped one mile in vertical curve. So I drove out to about 115, 120 miles today. So there should be a 1.8 mile hidden horizon that I can't see, which would equate to about 10,000 vertical feet. And looking at the elevation difference, Colorado Springs, is 6,000 feet above sea level up to the peak, um, Pikes Peak, which is 14,100. There's an 8,000 vertical foot difference. So using the model, just by the equation, we shouldn't be able to see the peak at 110, 15 miles. That's the theoretical limit where you should just be able to see the very tip of the peak, which is what I observed. It's pretty accurate um, in the video. I was about 115 miles out. I was out at... I tracked these down in Google Earth, assuming Google Earth is correct. The green path was the route I started filming and recording. Um, and I made it to Seabird, Colorado. And this is the dirt road I started coming down. And I couldn't see anything here. And I kept going up over the horizons and couldn't see anything. Returned to the interstate in Flagler and continued west till about mile marker 397 which is i pinpointed back to here was where i first saw the top of pikes peak um which i recorded and you can see about the first thousand feet so theoretically you can see it a little further out and that is that was about 95 miles out i was able to first visually see pikes peak and you can see the elevation profile here on google earth I mean, you've got this 14,000 foot peak and a relatively flat plane. I mean, the line of sight should be clear to see something. 
you know, and I was checking horizon over horizon over horizon, nothing, nothing. And then it finally appeared here about 95 miles out, which is about 10 miles shorter than the theoretical limit of when it first appeared. That's assuming a, a smooth globe too, like if you were on the ocean, but we obviously had hills. So that, I think you can account for that error, um, that extra 10 miles. And what I've also done, this is Earth and CAD. This is that, like the actual radius of the, the Earth, like the 4,000 miles. And I've drawn in to scale Pikes Peak. This is a 14,000 foot above um, sea level. The blue line is sea level. This is um, Denver elevation and this is uh, Flagler's elevation at 4,300. And I've also geometrically confirmed the theoretical distance um, to the tangent point of these two elevations. So it says, you know, at 5,300 feet, which was near the elevation of Flagler. We can pull that up. Let's see. Flagler is about 5,000 feet, 4,900 feet. Um, we were able to, you know, at 5,000, you should see it 115 miles away, which is pretty consistent with what we saw. Um, and then I also did a lower elevation too, because like the further you drop down, the further up, like an additional 15 miles you could theoretically see out um, for the furthest distance. But yeah, at about 115 miles, um, we didn't see anything. And then once we got to about 100 or 95 miles out, we were able to first visually observe it. Granted, there were some hills in the way, but. All that said, that confirms a curve. It's consistent with a curved appearance as the top of the peak appears first at the corresponding distance, according to the math and the model, you know, within 10 miles. So I don't think there's a flat plane. I mean, you couldn't, if it was flat, you would see near the base of the peak, 100 miles out, just mathematically looking, I mean, geometrically too. But that's not what we see. So that kind of confirms it for me. Just wanted to put that little video together and uh, document my findings. Now, why am I out here on my weekends driving around trying to confirm that the Earth's flat around? I don't know. I hear a lot of conspiracies and shit online, and I just want to test the validity of some of these things we hear. And I, you know, I, I listened to a lot of these conspiracy theories too. Like another one on the drive, I was noticing there weren't any chemtrails out today. Well, I know I was looking for the curved earth thing, but those are contrails. That's what they should look like. There's no chemtrails today, no geoengineering. So this is obviously something to note. November 3rd. And I think there's something to those because clearly today you could also see their con they were contrails. There were no contrails stretching hundreds of miles. But I think it's just important to not take everything for face value and actually confirm what your reality is. Don't let others dictate to you what your reality is.